Uh, Patrick, you were wanting to meet somebody that's uh, owning rental property and an investor. Uh, Patrick is new. He just came in and I'm picking on him. You want to hold your hand up, Patrick? Patrick owns five rental houses and he's wanting to learn how to do a better job. So he came to the meeting um, and is wanting to meet people that are active in the market. So before you leave, that's what you want to do. You want to go up and say hello to Shuli and ask her how she had got to 20 properties. How do you get to 1,000? <laughs> well, we can talk that. If you can get to 20, you can get to 1,000. That's exactly that's right. That's exactly right. Because it, it is, uh, and per that's perfect, because once you get to 20, you have learned that there are no secrets in the business. There are no secrets in real estate. Everything you need to know in real estate is available to learn. It's market information or market education. If you get the books that are back there, the tapes that are back there, and, and I really recommend, I'm going to pick up a couple of the old ones that are back there that I've seen, because I want to have them just some time when I'm killing time to go back and look at what people have said and thought because there are no secrets because you can get those books that were written in the 70s and you can go back and read things that were written in the 1890s in Knoxville Tennessee where you could buy a property on Gay Street for a thousand dollars a front foot on Gay Street and they would loan all you had to have was 50% of the money and they would finance the other 50% for 10 years at 8% interest so whatever they're talking about back there was in advertising in Knoxville papers in 1890. The other thing on the learning some of the old stuff is that real estate's dynamic and it runs in cycles. Mm -hmm. So what is not in vogue now, 10 years from now, will be. Okay. Uh, this, and that whole thing about cycles, we've seen the cycles come um, over the last few years for sure right so as we look at how things are going to move a year ago at the November meeting last year our meeting topic was investing after the election what does the future look like in East Tennessee and for whatever it's worth most everything we talked about is country we talked about the, uh, the rural communities having problems with their hospitals and their education system. We've talked about the rising unemployment in the rural counties. All of those things have come true. We talked about the population of people that is moving to Knoxville, looking for work and looking for jobs. The unemployment rate in Knoxville has risen as more people have moved here, but the occupancy rate has increased to like 90s. Depending on who you're talking to, the occupancy rate is somewhere between 94 and 97 percent of apartments and rental houses in Knoxville. So there's a very rapid acceptance of rental increases in Knoxville in the last year. We wanted to go through a cycle like in the 70s when the interest rate was 21% either. Well, what, where, where we are with housing, in my view, as we're looking forward, is we're in a 1974, 1975 credit standard, rental occupancy rate, and housing construction. You go to census.gov and you can look up the figures for yourself. In the 70s, the occupancy rate of vacant property in America averaged around 5%. It's the lowest recorded 10-year period of time since they've been keeping record on vacancy rates. And the reason was there was no financing for houses. There was no financing of speculative construction. Today, there is no financing for speculative construction. We are going to run out of lots in Knoxville sometime realistically, outside of the four main builders. We're going to run out of lots um, sometime between July and September of next year as far as normal availability of product. So what that means is even if you want to build a home, even if you can get a construction loan to build it, to find that random lot, that subdivision where you could buy lots, it's going to be really hard to do. And it's going to create a housing shortage in Knoxville very similar to what existed in the 70s when you built houses there were buyers waiting in line to buy that house. Now that may sound like a good thing if you're a builder. The problem is that there was no pace of building so it was difficult for builders to make pro continual profits. And you're going to wind up with the same thing with rental occupancy. We're going to continue to see the rent stay very high in the 92 to 97 percent range, I predict, uh, for the next several years in the Knoxville market. We just cannot build enough housing in Knoxville to meet the demand of people that want to live in the Knoxville area.